What's going on, everybody? It's Tyler here with Worship Innovation, and today got another ProPresenter 7 tutorial for you guys. This time, we're going to be utilizing uh, some automation features to create a really awesome uh, countdown loop that is going to play over the top of this um, announcement loop here. So we'll have a countdown in the lower third, and then at a specific point in time, we're actually going to change our main display to a large countdown to signal to the people in the audience that service is about to start. And uh, so it will actually automatically switch off the announcement loop, go to this larger output countdown, and it will remain, however, the announcement loop and the uh, previous countdown will remain on a, our uh, like announcement setup. So if you've got like televisions in your lobby that are running announcements or anything like that, they will get the same, um, basically nothing will change for them, but the main output is going to change. So I'll show you guys how to do that. It'll probably make a little bit more sense as we get going in the video. Now before we get much further, I wanna show you guys my screens and how I have this set up. So I've got one main output that's just set up as a 1920 by 1080 placeholder, as well as an announcements uh, secondary audience display that is also set up as a 1920 by 1080 placeholder. And then I have a multi-view stage display set up, very similar to the one that I showed in a previous video. This is actually set up on my uh, one of my displays here, so I can switch to that in my video software and show you guys a multi-view of what's going on in ProPresenter. So um, the main output is what's going to be sent to a projector. The announcements uh, display is what's going to be theoretically sent to like our televisions in the lobby or anything like that. We can have an unlimited amount of you know outputs in ProPresenter Seven, so that's we're just working with three as of now. Um, so. The first thing that I want to do before we even dive into any of the uh, announcements set up or anything like that is I need to set up a few looks in ProPresenter 7. So I'm going to click the Scenes tab and press Edit Looks. Now, I have two looks that I have set up, and I'm going to show you guys what they are. You create a new look preset by just pressing this plus button, and then you can select all of the layers that you would like to show up for that look. And you can also apply themes to your look and just a whole bunch of uh, different stuff that you can do there. It's uh, really amazing what, what all you can do and how you can set up these different looks. So the first look that I have is called Announcements for All. And basically what this is doing is it's allowing every layer to be present on my main display. And then for my announcement layer, or my announcements uh, television loop, I just want it to see the announcements as well as props and messages. So none of the slides, media, or video input are going to go out to my televisions. Now I'm going to create, I have another preset here that I have created called main output without announcements. So it's the exact same setup, except I have removed the announcements and the props and messages from my main output, okay? So you can see, this is the only difference as I have now made it to where those layers are no longer visible on my main output. So I'm going to switch to my announcements for all look. This is what I wanna start with because that's what's going to allow me to see my announcements layer on both displays. So the first thing I'm going to do is before displaying anything, I'm going to click this target over here in the top right hand corner and target this to the announcement layer. All right, so now when I'm playing this pre-service loop, we can see that it's coming out the announcements. It's not coming out the main output because my look is not set to the correct look. Now that it's on announcements for all, you can see it's coming out both the main output and the announcement window. All right, step one is complete. We've set up a look that now can see the announcement window and we've got everything that we need to basically make this work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a timer here that's a five minute countdown timer and that's countdown one. I'm now going to create a pre-service message that displays that countdown so that you know people can see when service is about to start. So I'm gonna call this pre-service countdown. 
and I'm going to click our little edit window. I'm going to make this say service will start in and then add countdown one. Give it a little space and then bring in countdown one. I'm also going to select a theme for this and I want it to be this text only style Helvetica lower third transparent. Now this is a theme that I personally created. Um, it wasn't that difficult. I've got a video that kind of shows you how to edit themes and um, specifically the video talking about media fills. You should get enough information in there to figure out how to uh, create your own themes. But basically I just uh, used the basic Helvetica lower third theme, removed the background so that it was transparent. So if I show this, it doesn't quite show exactly where I want it. Um, rather than editing the theme for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to insert a space here, and that will be good enough for the purposes of this video. So now when I start this message, it's going to automatically start my countdown timer, which is set at five minutes. Um, there, unfortunately, is not a way, to my knowledge, to make it so that a... Um, Oh, to make it so that an announcement or a message is shown uh, by, you know, playing a slide. Um, I wish that that were the case because that would make it to where this was, you know, automatable. But uh, it appears that that is not the case. Um, so we can manually trigger our countdown message. That's fine. And this is just going to keep showing. So if I switch over to my main out or our, my multi view, you guys are going to notice that what's coming out on the main output is also on the announcements layer. So our announcement output is on the right. The main output is on the left. All right, so we're back to our main screen. So now what I want to do is I want to keep this going. But now I want it so that at a certain point in time, maybe let's say like a minute before my service starts, I want this countdown video here, or this more stylized countdown, to show and basically tell people to, you know, hey, service is about to start. But I want this announcement to still be playing, and I still want this message to be shown to my lobby televisions. So I'm going to show you guys how to set that up. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a few cues to this slide. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an audience look action to change this to main display without outputs. All right. And really, I don't think there's any other. Uh, no, there's actually no other action that we need. OK, um, because of the way we set up our look. So once we set that, when this slide is queued right now, if I go to my look, it's on announcements for all, and we can see that everything is coming out the main output. We can see our, uh, our announcement loop. As soon as I cue this, however, now you'll notice this is displaying. But let me switch to my multi view. The announcement loop is still going on on the announcement screen. So it has changed our look to that main output minus announcements that we set up at the very beginning. Okay, so it just completely changed the look with one slide. All right, now what I'm going to do is I am going to trigger this slide right here, this event, by using the new calendar feature in ProPresenter 7. Now, this is very similar to the scheduler in ProPresenter 6, uh, but now it's called the calendar. So here I have a new event in the calendar. I just press this button to create an event. And this is good. I've just labeled this as Q countdown. I've set the date, and now I need to set the time that I want this to queue. So as I'm recording this, it is now 421. So I'm going to just set this to uh, queue at 422. So I've got my announcements for all set, it's playing, my message is showing, right? Everything is good. I'm going to switch over to my multi view. So we can see we're showing the same announcement loop on both screens. We've got our message in the lower third that's playing, letting people know that service is about to start. And once the clock on my computer reaches 422, 
we should automatically see the left display, which is our main output, switch to our countdown video. It's going to be at the same time as our other countdown. And now it has completely changed the look. The announcement layer is going to continue playing with that message until it's removed. So once service starts, I can go back to the messages and hide that message. All right, but for now, I'm going to just keep it up. And so that's a really awesome way that we can use the new countdown features in ProPresenter 7. Now, one of the things that I did not show you guys, so I'm going to clear this up because I know people are curious, is how did I get the countdown to show up on this slide? Well, this is a new feature in ProPresenter 7. It allows you to add a countdown to a slide. So if I go to the slide editor, I just have a text box here. And all you have to do is go to the text section and click this linked text button. Once you do that, you can now uh, make your source be you know, some kind of a shape. You can make it be some kind of timer, or it could be your system clock, a text ticker, or a video countdown. So I just set this to be queued or to be uh, linked to the same countdown that my pre-service countdown is coming from. So now I can have the same countdown being shown in two completely different ways on two different displays. And it is now triggered. Um, it is now triggered by a calendar event. So I could set this. Um, I could set this so that, you know, exactly one minute before my service starts, I automatically switch my main display to this larger format countdown that's more like a countdown video and then my lobby announcements are still running the way that they should um, you could do this for you know multiple services or anything like that just add as many calendar events as you need now the big thing about this is it requires you to start on your first look which is that announcements for all that's what i named it so what I would recommend is let's say that this right here is your final slide before your the end of your service. What I'm going to do is now uh, just create like a blank slide after that. And the whole purpose of this slide is to add an audience look action that changes us back to announcements for all. All right, so after you know the entire service is over, Right, we've still got our announcement loop. It's been playing for the entire service. Once we go, maybe you've got another service right after, you can just get here and then cue the next slide. And as soon as you do that, it instantaneously changes your look. You can see our main output now has changed back to where the announcement layer is visible. Okay, and then when the next service starts, you can start your countdown timer. You have your calendar event set up to automatically trigger your big countdown video. As soon as that tr gets triggered, then you're going to have the countdown displayed on two different outputs in two different ways. So that's how I would go about it. If you have multiple services and you need to quickly change that look back and you don't want to have to be bothered with it, just create a blank slide at the end of your presentation that automatically changes your look back to your announcements for all. All right, guys, so that is it. That's uh, how to set up a cool announcement loop countdown and automatically trigger uh, another countdown um, and just utilizing the countdowns feature and the looks feature to really create something awesome for your services in ProPresenter 7. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have learned something useful. If you did, please sure to like the video and subscribe uh, as well as check out worship-innovation.com for the latest updates, blog articles, and podcasts from Worship Innovation. Um, I will see you guys in the next video, and until then, keep on innovating.